Foot Clan, it is the time for fantasy football. We have preseason games we're reacting to. People's drafts are happening, and we have a huge announcement on today's show. Like this video, subscribe. This is the season to subscribe. Turn your notifications on and enjoy the show. Hey, it's me, the guy who introduces the show. Listen to my amazing voice. Now, check out the amazing Ultimate Draft Kit. The guys spend all off-season creating this bad boy, and they keep it updated all off-season. It's got their full projections, breakouts, sleepers, busts, over 100 player profile videos. It's even got a mobile app. Has my incredible voice lulled you into a deep sense of trust and commitment? Perfect. Now check out ultimatedraftkit.com and get ready to win your league. Now, back to the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah. <laughs> Welcome in. We're getting there. <laughs> I'm broken. I'm a broken man. Good gracious. We got you, Andy. <sighs> Together, mm, hand in hand, Monday. <laughs> Red Rover style, send uh, fantasy football on over. August 15th, welcome into the Fantasy Footballers podcast. What a game Red Rover was. Oh man, just <laughs> murder ball for little <laughs> kids. Just, <laughs> hey, we're going to hold this tight. We're going to try to knock you down while you try to break <laughs> our arms. Was, um, do they still do that? I don't think so. I think it's been banished from the the playground, which is probably the right call. I mean, there was a lot of injuries from that game as a child. Yeah, but we became resilient. Uh, weed it out. Sorry, we got some of the kids. <laughs> some of the kids were like, weeded out. We, we became resilient. Say, we be, the, the, those losers over there. We became stronger because the broken bones had more right. calcium. That's what I'm saying. Because <laughs> yeah, gotcha. it heals stronger. Yeah. Um, Welcome into the show. So excited to be with you. Fantasy drafts. Uh, I mean, really, they're going to be going this weekend, this week, all the way through to the beginning of the year. We've got preseason week one in the books. We have a lot going on. Very, very excited to dive into some quarterback rankings today, talk through some of the preseason news. I mean, it, it's happening right now. Oh, it's happening. It's a big week. And, um, well, this is this is as big as it gets because we have something very exciting to announce. Mike, could I get your trumpet? <laughs> Thank you very much. Right now, it's our biggest giveaway of the year. We're giving away the ultimate draft kit for life. For life. This is our ultimate draft kit for life giveaway. We are also tossing in a Debo Samuel signed jersey, a Stefan Diggs signed mini helmet. But how would I possibly get such incredible prizes? <laughs> Thank you, Mickey. Uh, no, it's me. The voice the of public, public opinion. The public, yes. Um, well, here's how, Mike. You can order the 2022 Ultimate Draft Kit, which many of you already have and many of you have not. But if you order it by Friday at 6.30 Eastern, you will be entered to win the Ultimate Draft Kit for life. Oh, boy. And uh, you can do that at ultimatedraftkit.com. We'll be announcing the winner during a live stream event on Friday. Clear your calendars. Make sure Friday you're with us. We're going to have a party. It's going to be an awesome live stream event, and we will give it away on that live stream. We did this last year. It was awesome. And we have had... Ultimate draft kit for life winners in years past. And they just they just, you know, send Papa Josh an email and then he gives them a new UDK yeah. every year. Day until it's they until they die. So, you know, it, it's a pretty fun giveaway. We'll be live on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook for that live stream on Friday. But again, go to ultimatedraftkit.com, pick up the UDK or the UDK plus. This is the time. Prepare yourself for your draft, and uh if you do it before Friday, you will be entered to win. The ultimate draft kit for life, just on autopilot, the UDK. So uh, check that out. Here's the quick question. Take away from week one of the preseason. I'd like to skip this question, uh, please. Th there, are <laughs> there are a lot of 
you know, players that we wanted to see on the field. And we may have seen five snaps, ten snaps, uh, a second quarter here, a player that we didn't think should be playing in the fourth quarter here. But, um, Mike, I'll let you start this. Uh, do you need any – do you need, like, a music bed or anything like uh, that? I think we've been there, done that. Yeah, so go ahead and share your, your insight. We don't need the music bed for it. And you got to – like em, emotions, we, we talked about this a lot. And just the emotional connection we get to our our players because they're on our teams. They help us win fantasy championships. But you got to be realistic about these things. And I've been trying to hold out just, just grasping at the – the uh, the small amount of hope that I could for Antonio Gibson since the NFL draft and this preseason week one, it's just game one, but it went as bad as it possibly could go. Yeah. With McKissick coming back, you're like, okay, that's fine. We can accept where what Gibson is now. Add a third round running back. Okay. We can, ex we can try and factor that in and Gibson can still be useful uh, maybe he's being a little bit overdrafted, but fumbling at practice comes into preseason game week one can set all of Washington coaches' minds at ease. Have a, just a real solid performance. Essentially, immediately fumbles, gets benched. Brian Robinson comes in to play with the starters, looks good, gets a goal line carry, and then Antonio Gibson is seemingly punished and put back into the game. With the backups. Mm -hmm. This is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow, this is really long. <laughs> yeah, this this is like, I have, you know, I've, he's been my champion for the last couple of years, trying to be like, He's okay right now at his ADP, but now the way it stands at his ADP, it's, it would be a really catastrophic draft pick. It's a shame. It sucks. Because I, st I still think Gibson is extremely talented, the player, like him, but now the situation is just – he's put himself – it, 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 he's played is, himself it, out. He's played himself yeah. into a really bad situation. There are players who have had fumbling issues – who have corrected it and gone all the way to the other side of like they they never fumble again. And if one player should have really gotten that message this yeah. off season, it was Antonio Gibson. And I don't know what he's doing wrong, but well, man, I mean, I, I fumb fumbling. Is what yeah, I imagine that at this point, mentally, when the team is just like, don't fumble, don't fumble, like you're like, ah! we were saying that he's and probably then, saying, don't fumble, don't fumble, yeah. don't fumble in his head the whole time. He's he's worried about nothing else but not fumbling, and then causes the fumble yeah we saw that with what was it chris carson uh a couple years ago at the yeah. beginning of the year it was like the fumbling problem was in his yep. head yep um yeah it, it, the the headline there extremely risky draft pick right now yes and brian robinson looked good uh there were there's a lot of buzz around george pickens yes there is uh oh, who, who made a big play again he's been making them at practice but he made a great play in the game He's so good. I want a piece of Pickens. I, I, <laughs> I mean, he's just he. I he might be the best wide receiver in this draft class. He is so history dang good. of the NFL. Even thank you, thank you for <laughs> taking that up a notch. Romeo Dobbs begs to differ, Jason. Yeah, yeah. Uh, some some great wide some great rookies. Damian Pierce was the name that um, stood out. That not, was number one for me too. Yeah, not just to us, but to Coach Lovey Smith, which running back for the Houston Texans, I would say matters. Yeah, he he did not run with the ones. Marlon Mack got the first run for the game, so it's worth notating that. Like he he he's not the starter. He not is yet. He, right. He is currently the backup, um, but he looked good. He's their best running back. Marlon Mack versus this incoming rookie is, I don't think, a fair fight. And if not by week one. Early in the season, I expect Damian Pierce to get the opportunity. We are not usually into day three, fourth round past uh, draft picks for rookie running backs. Historically, it's a terrible bet to make. But this one, the depth chart, the situation, and what he's shown, what the coaches have said, is leaning me towards like, I mean, this isn't a high-end pick. This is, you know, one of your last picks in your fantasy draft. He he deserves a shot. Yeah, we, we did a uh, stream with... Uh, uh, Bleacher Report this yeah. past week, and this that's where the I was highlighting Damian Pierce on that on that stream before the game, and talking like these 
it's always been day three running backs, no thank you. But this year, I don't know. It might be a little bit different. Pierce looks like he should be able to take over, and we're, I mean, we're still getting buzz that Tyler Algier sooner than later could be the starter for the Atlanta Falcons. Like, think, there could be a shift. I'm Pierce's just, fourth round, right? Uh, I believe that is correct. It's just it's an interesting thing for us to take note of now and then. As the season progresses, you know, maybe we have to adjust because the NFL is adjusting. Since 2014, 77% of fourth round rookie running backs beat their average draft position. So, because they're being drafted like at a minimum. Yeah, at a minimum, you, you have a shot at, you know, you, the odds are with you that they'll be better than where you drafted them. And then there's a percentage chance that he would be uh, more than that, right? He looks like the most talented back by like a long shot. So, a uh, lot to look forward to there. Let's jump into some more news. News and notes from around the league. Jets quarterback Zach Wilson. Oof. Injured his right knee against the Eagles. What's the latest? Well, it was originally thought to be an ACL tear scare. Then it's looking like a bone bruise and a meniscus injury. The reported timeline was two to four weeks. Then it was said that they're not going to know for sure until they basically get inside the knee. Mm -hmm. So I think there will be more, uh, I, I, you know, as of this moment, as of this recording, what we know is he's got a knee injury, he's getting knee surgery, and they're hopeful he is back soon. We will know more definitive answers probably later today tomorrow in the very near future i think that the two to four weeks is unfortunately the best case scenario I say that's optimistic because like they it can only get worse once once they get in there you we can confirm okay you know he's going to be out a month or they can get in there and say we got to do a full meniscus repair and that's the season so hopefully that's not the case yeah that's and that's, mike white's the backup uh yes. So you you no no we got we got Flacco up there too. That's right. Yeah, that's right. But Mike White was the one that came in right after him. So both of those guys, Mike White had that little window of of good play last year. But Joe Flacco, you know, there's been comments by their head coach about him deserving of being a starting quarterback. So yeah. So Arrow pointing up for Elijah Moore. If it's Flacco, <laughs> it's just not Zach Wilson. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Drake London, rookie wide receiver for the Falcons. Had a really nice crossing route, but apparently injured his right knee on the play. Uh, head coach Arthur Smith has a plan, oh. and it does not in, uh, include London being hurt long term. Got a plan. So um, that was good news because that would have been devastating. First yes. play of your career, you make an actual play. Uh, Darren Waller has been held out of camp due to a camp string, a Yo hamstring injury. And it's been a while. He is he's been gone for a significant amount of uh time. Uh last you know when, when we came into this off season, the 10 things to remember episode, one of my takeaways was to not draft the players who missed basically all of camp. Last year it was Curtis Samuel, Saquon, Kenny G, Odell Beckham, Mari Cooper, these guys that they missed pretty much all of camp and, and they but, were but terrible. Curtis picks. Samuel was really good, right? He still could be. <laughs> Although that being said, he was running He's, behind Jahan Dotson. Those were mostly L's. I mean that that yeah. that tip held up. Yeah. So uh, Darren Waller, Hollywood, uh, who has missed pretty much all of camp as well. There there are a couple of names I'm currently monitoring to see. Like, are they getting back soon? Because if not, I am I am taking them way down my board. Is Hollywood still not running? Yeah, I don't I don't think he is uh, at full team activity yet. Well, let's put it to the test with this name, Elijah Mitchell, Jason. Well, this is new. Well. Hamstring injury. He's not going to play in the preseason. Expected to be ready for week one. Uh, this is bad. Scary. In my mind, this is very bad. The nice thing um, about this for fantasy is that he is generally a running back going in the areas where I'm not taking running backs. Uh, I'm planning my drafts. Uh, you know, if you listen to the uh, top 10 tips and tricks episode from this last week, one of the things is to map out the draft. And I, I like the wide receivers and even the quarterbacks in that range better than. Um, better than the running backs. More injury news. Christian Watson, Robert Tunyon. But this they, is good injury news. They've been activated. Yay! Activate. Things can go... <laughs> <laughs> Whatever can happen can happen in reverse. Kadarius Tony un unlikely to practice this week. He has been eased into camp due to an off-season knee scope that forced him to miss OTAs. 
um, managing his reps but can't uh, in camp but was shut down early last week. Not so a good sign. we don't really know if there's a re-injury or a uh, – you know, the, the easing in wasn't we do, slow enough. We do know. We do know that there's been a re-injury because even though that hasn't necessarily been officially reported, I promise you if things are getting better and better and better for him, they're not going to go, you know what? We're going to shut you down. <laughs> like that just would not happen in real life. Looking too good, Tony. Yeah. Looking too good. So I, I think that there has been uh, some sort of setback and hopefully it's not catastrophic, but this is a guy that even though he was phenomenal last year, we've talked him up a lot. I've been targeting him. Um, he was going to be a fire shared pick between yeah. uh, Mike and I on the, on the fire and ice show once upon a time. This worries me because his problem has been being on the field and he's not on the field. Yeah. It's nerve wracking. Uh, Devonte Smith though, back to practice and Joe Burrow back to practice without an appendix. Okay, a little bit lighter. A little bit lighter. Any other news? How you doing, Brooksy? Doing great. Yeah? Yeah. Do you enjoy the preseason? Yeah. I say, I say Brooks, that was, we had a lot of news there to cover from the not real football Ooh, over the weekend. That's a good, good jab. Is that not real news? I think Brooks and I both felt a little bit sad. Can I yeah. speak on our behalf, Brooks? Good. Yes. We, we were wrong. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Okay. We, okay. we overstepped. Right. We overstepped. We we uh, we were buzzkills, right? <laughs> Brooke, we were party poopers. Yeah. I'm so proud of us. Yeah. As a people, good where work. we can admit when we are wrong. And I I reacted too strongly to Mike's emphatic. It's football time because I didn't want it to be like, you know, I didn't want it to not have its value when the real season hit. That's where I was coming from. But the truth, yeah. See, but the truth is is that this is very exciting to get to see these players on the field. So I, I formally um, Excellent. repent. And look, trust <laughs> me, ladies and gentlemen, when it is week one, there it will be a much higher rejoicing of it. I'll be on trumpet. Yes. <laughs> I, it, Full band. That's why, it, I don't know if you guys knew this, I've actually been saving my voice for week one. Oh, oh fantastic. That's, this Mark. has not been... Uh, You're the preseason. We're, we're holding you out. That's right. Yeah. I can't welcome <laughs> people in until the real season. All right. Let's jump into some quarterbacks. Quarterbacks. Well, let's do it. Uh, we are fresh off of some wide receiver rankings and running back rankings episodes. Uh, we did two of each. So if you want to go back and listen to where our consensus rankings were on those players, feel free. These are our four point per task uh, for, let me just try that again. Four point per passing touchdown rankings at the quarterback position. Number one is Josh Allen. Um, it was funny. I was talking to my son. Uh, a couple days ago, we're reactivating some leagues. He's my co-manager in our uh, in my dynasty league, and we were just talking about how much we love Justin Herbert. And he's like, "Yeah, we really. He's the best. He could be a great dynasty quarterback." I'm like, "Yeah, he's a great one." And I go, "But we have Josh Allen." Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't so think Josh Allen. I've got Josh Allen. We've all got him in number one. He's being drafted as the number one quarterback at the end of the second round. 4,400 yards passing, 36 touchdowns, 15 picks, another 763 on the ground, six rushing touchdowns, and more importantly for fantasy, been the quarterback one in back-to-back -back seasons. Incredible st uh, stability in terms of offensive system, weapons, he does lose, expectations. does lose Brian Dable. He does. He does. But uh, thankfully, it, it seems... The program has been installed, right? We're sure. not still installing here, and so Stallion ends up at the top. Excellent. Yeah, I think that there is, you know, th there's the dream of the 5,000 and 1,000 quarterback. Yeah, absolutely. Josh Allen is not going to be a 5,000 and 1,000, meaning 5,000 passing yards and 1,000 rushing yards. Um, look, Kyler is more realistic to hit that because Josh Allen doesn't run for the level of – those yards but the the probability of a 4500 and 500 which is which is outrageously good it's almost like that's what he's going to do he's going to get at least 500 rushing yards and around 4500 passing yards kyler's a big question mark uh lamar uh doesn't have probably that passing volume when you can do both excellently like we always talk about we want mobile rushing quarterbacks that's that's uh that's phenomenal 
they should still be able to be good passing quarterbacks yes. if you want them to be great yes. at fantasy. And that's the thing that Josh Allen brings is a guaranteed production on both sides. So if he throws for his days where he's not going to rush a touchdown and he's going to he's going to throw for three. It's it's um he is a difference maker. And I wish I could experience having him on my roster in some of these redraft leagues right now where he's going that sometimes second or third round ADP I, is at the back of the second round. Yeah, I just can't I can't get myself to not take the running backs and wide receivers there when you need multiple of those over the single quarterback position, but I really want to experience it cuz I haven't personally had the Josh Allen um fun. Yeah, he should be the number 1 pick in a super flex league. And one interesting fact is he only had six rushing touchdowns. The previous 3 years were 8, 9 and 8. So that number can go up on the ground to his mean. Uh, but we don't need to say anything else here because we can move on to Justin Herbert. Jason and I have him at number two, Mike at number four, and he's being drafted as the QB three right now. Last year was the QB two, ended the year on fire fantasy finishes of one, six, three, six, five, nine, twelve, two. This is a Hall of Fame trajectory. Yes, it is. 5,000 yards. Mm -hmm. 38 passing touchdowns, 15 interceptions. So he threw more passing touchdowns and for more yards than Josh Allen did, simply didn't have the rushing production. But to me, you know, these two guys, if I'm going to take one, I'm going to take Herbert at the end of the third because I don't think the gap is big enough in terms of end-of-year production. Now you, you get more risk with Herbert without the 700-plus rushing yardage because the, the touchdown numbers could go down a little bit. You could end up in in some variation and variance there, but not by much. Yeah, I mean, uh, Herbert's great. Uh, the truth is both of these guys, for me, when I'm drafting, I'm not taking either one of them because there are quarterbacks, I I think, that we're going to talk about in a second, that are s close. They're, they're, they're not, you know, two tiers away from these two guys. These are definitely the top two, but these guys, you're going to pay the premium if you want to draft them. You will be sacrificing a top end running back or wide receiver uh, you know but if you look at the Vegas odds for you know who's going to throw the most uh, who's going to be MVP I mean Herbert is at the top of these lists so his counting stats for fantasy football will be outrageously good you know if, if things break down in the passing game he's also very mobile he doesn't run for yes. 750 yards but if you if you comp the physical bodies, the the forty times just the physical athleticism between Josh Allen and Justin Herbert, they aren't that far apart. Agreed. Let me let me ask you a question, Mike. Which pass catchers do you actually like more? Do you like the Keenan, Mike Williams, and I'm going to include Eckler? Okay. Or do you prefer Diggs, Gabe Davis, and then what like we get like out Dawson of James, James or Cook or Dawson Knox? Uh, I prefer. I'll take the Chargers guys. Me too. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, that's an interesting thing to pay attention to. We already know the division. You know, you think about playing it, it, Buffaloes with New England and that defense in Miami. Um, it seems like the the offenses in the AFC West are going to be more prolific, which could be a point in the favor of, you know, you're going to be playing two games against Kansas City, two games against, you know, Derek Carr and Devontae Adams, two games against Russell Wilson. Uh, Dwayne McFarlane has shared a stat uh, over from Pro Football Focus, which is really, really neat. Uh, the AFC and NFC West this year, they account for more than 50% of the current projected 50-point games on the over-unders. So you really do want players in those divisions because they play each other this year. And so there are, if you're just looking at like how often there are big bada-boom games for fantasy – it's going to be in those two divisions. No, I would just like them to just do all primetime games AFC West. <laughs> sure. So let, let me ask you this. So we know that like Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, both of these quarterbacks in your your home family office leagues, like these guys are going to go very high. They're going to hit this ADP for sure. Now, you could be playing in leagues, though, with more experienced players who buy into the philosophy of – the supply and the demand of the quarterback, I can wait. I can wait, which then presents an opportunity here because these quarterbacks eventually, they just start dropping. So mm -hmm. what is the point where, like, it? and it's probably different for both Allen and Herbert, but is it like, 
Is it fourth round for Josh Allen where you say, oh, that it, you absolutely all just grab him right there? Uh, absolutely. I, okay. you, could, you could argue that I it's I think fourth, fourth for either player. That's what I was going to okay. say, fourth okay. for either player, because it's not about the player. It's about the opportunity cost. It's who are you giving up. When I look at the players in the third round right now on ADP, it, Leonard Fournette slips there. Mike Evans yeah. is there. Ezekiel, like, I'm, I'm not going to... I'm not going to sacrifice that, but if I look at the players in the fourth round and I'm saying, okay, instead of George Kittle or or Terry McLaurin or right, these, okay. these question mark guys, now I can get a known commodity. That's all it is. It's not anti Josh Allen or Herbert. It's just that's the gap. So as soon as you get to the fourth round, I'm willing to grab one of those two guys. All right, let's get to our number three quarterback in a moment. Time to talk about Kyler Murray, Arizona Cardinals quarterback. Injured for a portion of last year. He sits at number three on Jason and my rankings. Mike has him at five. He's being drafted as the QB five. Uh, you know, last year was broken up by injury, but before that he had been prolific for fantasy. First two weeks of the year was the number one quarterback. And uh, you know you're going to get a rushing upside situation with Kyler Murray. Uh, the Cardinals do have an ambiguous wide receiver situation. A.J. Green is back. Rondale Moore, second-round pick. Supposed to be more involved. They traded their first-round draft pick for Hollywood Brown, and then you have DeAndre Hopkins, who is missing the first six weeks due to a suspension. You got Zach Ertz and Trey McBride. You no longer have Chase Edmonds and Christian Kirk. So, Mike, are, are there? that's a lot of names that we're talking about that we don't know what the output's necessarily going to be. Is that why you're at ADP with Kyler? Yeah, it's that's so much of the season at the beginning to be without DeAndre Hopkins. But and uh, but do remember, like, welcome back, everybody. Remember what Kyler Murray was at the beginning of the year. The Arizona Cardinals were seven and zero. Kyler Murray was the overall number one quarterback the first two weeks. Through those first seven weeks, he was absolutely dominating for fantasy purposes then hurt his ankle uh and missed you know over a month basically and he came back and was the quarterback one immediately in his first game back so so like his the deep ball is elite from kyler murray the rushing ability it's not what he wants to go to immediately but he could be forced to use that a little bit more over those first six weeks without without DeAndre Hopkins. But at ADP in the fifth round, I'm I'm fine going with Kyler Murray there. Let me ask a question to you, Jason. By the way, starts the year against Kansas City and Las Vegas. So you might know really quickly, because he's going to need to do a lot in those games. You might know really quickly whether he can without Hopkins. Do the Cardinals have enough weapons, Jason, to support Kyler as the overall quarterback one? Yeah, I, I, I do think they do. Um, that is presuming Hollywood Brown is healthy come week one. And that that's really a huge question right now. If I was drafting today, I am a little bit more skeptical. I hope that by the time most of our drafts are happening, about three weeks from now, we've got clarity. Hollywood's out there, plays a preseason game or two, in which case, absolutely. You've seen the Cardinals over the last several years, the entire Cliff Kingsbury era, they get off to hot starts. They, they've got to, whatever they do in the offseason, they're like, okay, this is how we're going to play. It's great. And then they just don't change it. Um, and everybody catches up with them. But the beginnings of the years have been awesome. And I think that between, I mean, they, you know, it's like you're going to get Hopkins back. You've got Hollywood Brown. You've got year two Rondale. You said AJ Green. Connor could catch it out of the backfield. Zach Ertz. And they drafted, uh, you know, uh, Trey, Trey McBride. McBride. So there's a lot of weapons here. And then the most important weapon is his leg. So I think. Kyler Murray has that opportunity to be the quarterback one and where he's being drafted in the fifth, the opportunity cost given up. I mean, the gap between Kyler and those other two guys. Yeah, I would prefer those other two guys, but the gap isn't huge. He also was the quarterback two in 2020. So he's, he's established that he can finish up there for fantasy. Number four, Jalen Hurts of the Eagles. Uh, Mike Hurt's has so a, good. Mike's guy, Jalen Hurts. How dare you? Um, we've got. <laughs> I, look, I, I was shocked by this ranking too. So but here we are. Mike at number two, Jason at four. I have him at seven. 
Uh, Jalen Hurts was extremely consistent last season, only threw for just over 3,000 passing yards and 16 touchdowns, uh, but managed to finish inside the top 10 at quarterback. And so the expectation here, obviously, I'm draft. I, I thought I was Mr. Lowman. But I'm really just Mr. Average yeah. because he's going as the quarterback seven. Now, he's probably the most popular fantasy draft pick at the quarterback position when you combine draft capital and upside. And there's always one, right? Every year it seems like there's one guy that's kind of sitting in that, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth round that everybody knows in the back of their head could end up as a top two, three quarterback. Hertz is that. Um, he, to me, he has to throw for more than 3,100 yards and 16 touchdowns to do it. But the hope is that A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith's maturity, the team having another year together unlocks Jalen Hurts. And, and if he's unlocked, you know, the sky's the limit. That's For me, that's what it is. Is We saw last year Hurts wasn't the, – the numbers are not spectacular. The, the, pass, the passing numbers are very mediocre – but his rushing numbers were so fantastic, and and remember that if you're if you're uh, in four point touchdown scoring, you're still getting six for the rushing touchdown. So that is a slight bump up. It's not like if it's not you know game changing, but it every every couple of little points certainly helps. And I think that the addition of AJ Brown is massive for this offense and for the passing game, and not only the addition of A.J. Brown, you have the subtraction of Zach Ertz. Like, Zach Ertz, for half the season before they traded him, he was a big part of the offense, and Zach Ertz is a catch-and-fall-down guy, where Dallas Goddard, now that you have an entire offseason, like, he is installed, he is the number one tight end. Like, Dallas Goddard is an incredible pass-catching weapon at the tight end position. Year two here for Devontae Smith, like, their weapons to me are, I think, undervalued in terms of uh, like, like we're talking about the Chargers guys, the Arizona guys. To me, the Philadelphia pass catchers, that trifecta is right up there. I think that they're going to be absolutely electric. Jalen Hurts, the rushing numbers, perhaps the rushing touchdowns come down. There's a world where they do not. But I think that the overall volume and rushing just yardage of 782, I think he can easily – Repeat that. That was only in 15 games this last year for Jalen Hurts. Very consistent, showing us what he can be for fantasy with pretty mediocre passing. If that passing jumps up, then you're looking at a Lamar Jackson MVP type of a season where he's just, by a wide margin, the number one quarterback. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with everything being said. There's not much to add. You know, over 100 targets last year went to uh, Quez Watkins and Jalen Rager. That's who he was throwing the ball to. Now his weapons get better. And we saw, you know, the, the question was posed by you, Andy, about Kyler. Like, uh, are, are the weapons good enough in Arizona to support that overall finish? And that really matters. We saw Kyler run more without Hopkins and score less fantasy points. It's not just running. You have to have both to be truly elite. And I think that, you know, this is at least the opportunity for Hurts to say, I can be an NFL quarterback passing the ball as well if he can. We already know the rushing is going to be there. He'll be a home run for fantasy. Uh, Detroit, Minnesota, Washington, Jacksonville to start the year. Okay. So if you're, if you're kind of weighing how is it going to start, I mean, he's, he was an interesting case last year as the quarterback won through the first 11 weeks and yet never finished at one or two any of those weeks in terms of actually you know, having one of those week winning performances. He's just so trustworthy. Lamar at five. Lamar Jackson, 25 years old. Jason has him at six. I got him at four. Mike at three. He's healthy again. Uh, he missed the last four weeks last year, has that connection with uh, Mark Andrews. We know it. Hollywood Brown is not there. I am, you know, if, if you want to talk about weapons, you know, you, you have a case that there could be a problem, right? Like if Rashad yeah, Bateman doesn't could. step up, there could be an issue there. Obviously, Mark Andrews is a, an elite uh, pass catcher. But uh, I've been on record. I think Lamar Jackson has a chip on his shoulder. We've seen him as an MVP. We've seen him as the running away number one overall uh, quarterback in fantasy. And, uh, you know, he had a 767 rushing yards, and he missed four weeks last year. Four and a half, really. So 
I think that you know what you're getting with Lamar. I think that you've had a player that has shown you he can be the number one overall player. And I think he's going to go out there and work with what he has and, and figure it out. The schedule for the Ravens is very good. And um, he's kind of one of the players I'm planting a flag on this year. Sure. It, it will be interesting for Lamar. It, it, clearly with my projection, I, I am in. Um, and I, we were talking about targets per route run uh, You know, last week. Rashad Bateman's targets per route run are actually – they were very poor uh, for a rookie – and what we, so that, I mean, that's a little bit of a red flag. What we don't know is, was that simply because that's how Lamar Jackson operates this offense where it's Mark Andrews and then one pass catcher, which that that's, that's what we have seen. So hopefully Rashad Bateman, the, those numbers will go up and he proves that he is truly a number one wide, wide receiver would have hoped to see a little bit better targets per route run as a rookie. But you saw like the touchdown percentage for Lamar Jackson went back like essentially to just below the league average where I'm not expecting him to hit 9% like he did the the MVP year, but he followed that up with a 6.9 touchdown percent rate uh, in 2020, which nice. is is nice and it, like way above league average, but for that to plummet down to 4.2, that was the difference Like where Lamar Jackson still had some boom games last week, but he just – or last year, it was just not nearly as consistent – as the previous years, and the reason was because of the touchdown rate. So we need Rashad Bateman to really – this offense needs Bateman to step up in just a, a massive way. I, I think that one of the things that hopefully unlocks the offense that he did not have last year was a running game. Uh, you, Agreed. You were using Latavius Murray and <laughs> Devontae Freeman. <laughs> I mean, it, it was kind of an embarrassment, and – you know, when you talk about, like, per game, he was the best rusher last year at the quarterback position, 63.9 yards per game. Better than Hurts, better than Allen. And he's done the thing we hope Hurts can do, which is he's thrown 36 touchdowns in a season. So, um, you know, you do have to pay more for him than Jalen Hurts, though. So that's one of your issues. Yeah, I mean, I you know, it's like I love Jalen Hurts. I love him. But he does seem like the poor man's Lamar Jackson. He's slightly worse quarterback slightly worse rusher so it's like well okay sure. let's go with Lamar Jackson he's just uh better he's more proven the weapons are the real issue here if J.K. Dobbins and Rashad Bateman step up and are awesome this year then Lamar Jackson's going to be phenomenal he's going to be a home run pick if those two guys falter J.K. Dobbins isn't quite back from injury and you've got Mike Davis out there really uh, you know carrying the workload uh, with the tube on his back uh, and Rashad Bateman is not the dude, right? Then I think you'll see some struggles there, and and you might have these two Hurts and and uh, Lamar Jackson kind of flip flop for what they can do this year, just due to weapons. So it's really if you believe in Lamar Jackson, believe in the weapons, bet on the weapons as well, and kind of you know stack it there. How weird is it to be talking about number six overall? I don't quarterback. like it. Number six, Patrick Mahomes, who have uh, you know he looked great in limited work in preseason week one. Surprise, surprise. Uh, we've got him at five, five, and six. I don't like it. To be fair, this is four-point scoring. He is He's higher if we are six-point per passing touchdown. Do we always do these shows with four points? We do. Yeah. yeah I don't like that. <laughs> all the Can leagues, we go back and change it? All the leagues that you know we play in personally, the, the Megala Bowl League, our listener league, all of those, we do six points per passing touchdown. I think that is you know the, the more fun format. But default and still majority, we're still kind of blown away that the majority leagues still go four point. So that's why we do the rankings. Patrick Mahomes is my quarterback three in six point per passing touchdown leagues. Uh, but when you've got these, I mean, we just talked about it, three back-to-back-to-back mobile rushing touchdown scoring on the ground quarterbacks um that's that's going to affect it but i mean it does feel bad to have mahomes this low because here's what we know he's the best quarterback in the nfl right it's like that's it so he doesn't have <laughs> quite the weapons and there's oh he lost tyree kill and, that's what it and is travis kelsey is Aye. 33 so there's there's some question marks here but in the end he's the best quarterback in the national football yeah, and you kind of trust him to figure it out for the most part, right? Maybe maybe you're concerned about top two, three potential because of the departure of Tyreek Hill, but I think most people expect Patrick Mahomes to figure it out and be a, a pretty stable force on your fantasy roster. Now, he's being drafted as the quarterback two 
because of that expectation. Uh, by the way, I threw a poll up to our listeners to figure out the, okay. to figure out the four point right. six point breakdown. Uh, it is the default to be at four point on ESPN and Yahoo. Well, keep uh, us posted. Right now, it's sitting uh, it's about fifty fifty. Okay, so I'll let you know. But Mike, any, any thoughts on Mahomes and you know replacing? You know, he didn't just lose Tyreek. He also lost NBA, uh, not NBS. Uh, he also lost, you know, some of his other weapons in the offense. Marcus Robinson, was Marcus gone. Robinson, yeah, at By Byron Pringle, right? Those were the three targets last year that he used the most. Um, you don't expect Andy Reid to do that when you've been that good and that on the edge of the Super Bowl. So, yeah, I mean, are you what's the what's the worst he can finish? The worst he can finish is quarterback ten. I, you know, he has a really down year, but he's still a part of one of the best offenses, and he's still great in his own right. You've got Hall of Fame, unbelievable quarterbacks from history we can draw on. You've got Peyton Manning, you've got Aaron Rodgers, guys who just were at their peak, the best quarterback in the NFL, who finished as the quarterback one in fantasy. And then you go back and you look through the career of these guys. Take Aaron Rodgers, you know, when he's like the two, one, two, one. And then uh -huh. he's like, okay, he's seven. Uh, he's seven again. He's he's the quarterback ten. Same with Peyton Manning. He finishes the quarterback six and four and one. And the, you know, quarterback six. If he finishes where we've got him projected, that's good. That's really yeah. good on his career. We'll look back and say, oh, he was he was okay that year. It's just with the changing of the weapons, with the lack of mobility compared to the elite rushers that are now in the NFL. You don't expect him to be the quarterback one, the quarterback two this season. He was the quarterback four. Last year with the, the 4,837 quarterback four, and he played all 17 games. So it's, I don't think that this is an unfair projection here for Mahomes when you factor in, like, he did all of those things with his, with his guys, with, with a, a little bit younger it Travis Kelsey so, and, and, uh, and Tyree Kill. He's going in the third round. So yeah. we just named a bunch of guys going in the fourth, fifth, yeah. Sixth round that we have above. Like I, I'm he's not, just off the board then. Yeah, he's just he's not in consideration for That's, me. I have him in one league that makes where he sad. fell to like the sixth round. The irony is that he had so many weak winning weeks. Number two, number two, number one, number two. But again, like yeah, what but then I, but but then a bunch of weeks at twenty two, seventeen, twenty six, stuff you had never seen from a home. You're hopeful that Juju and M V S can get it done, but that sentence is troubling. <laughs> <laughs> that sentence is super – that's a yeah. big problem. And that's why he's here. That's a huge problem saying, uh, you know – Let's rely on, on Juju yeah. and MVS. Literally two players that other teams said we'd rather not rely on them. Let's let them go, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, Green Bay said, nah, not important. And at Pittsburgh least in, said, nah, at no least thank in, you. Uh, preseason week one, those were the two guys. You saw it. Uh, Juju, 11 of 11 snaps. MVS nine of eleven. They were the first, you know, in the two wide receiver sets. Yep. That's how the season's going to start. Now Sky Moore looked, he looked he, okay. He looked good, right? He came in he primarily okay. with the second string, but he, he's he's a talented player. Yeah. All right, let's move on to a player who nearly threw three times as many touchdowns <laughs> as Jalen Hurts. <laughs> Tom Brady. 45 years old, 43 touchdowns. I think he's trying to match his age every year in touchdowns, which is good for fantasy. I have him at six, Jason at seven, Mike at nine. Showed no signs of slowing down. Finished inside the top five. Let me count this up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. That means fantasy finishes on the week by Tom Brady inside the top five. And once at number six. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to give him any credit for that one, yeah. Jason. Well, uh, that's what I'm here for. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Julio Jones, Russell Gage, the, Leonard Fournette. So you just named to me the outlook for Brady. When I think about Brady this season, because he's awesome, he's going to be uh, elevating his weapons, but he is limited by them because he's not a mobile quarterback. So how good are his weapons? And I have some fears. I know that you, you just named a great set of wide receivers, but we don't know if Julio still got it. We don't know that Godwin's going to start the year fully healthy, and we don't know that Russell Gage can really play that role. We have There's a lot of question marks here to me where the range of outcomes are wide. I could see Julio being Julio Jones. I mean, the, the, when you look at the best wide receivers of all time, at this age, they were okay. They weren't 
they weren't always washed. So, and and Julio is unmistakably one of the best wide receivers of all time. You know, if Godwin starts the year healthy, which seems impossible, but the the closer and closer we get, it's like, oh, this this could happen. He could he could start week one. If, if that happens, then I think Brady is right on pace for five thousand and forty again. If Godwin isn't there, I worry that Brady could get off to a slow start because if he doesn't throw for it, he's not running for it. The the question here for that I have with Tom Brady is it comes down to Todd Bowles versus Bruce Arians. Where Bruce Arians, like no risk it, no biscuit. I want to throw all the time. I want to throw deep all the time. Now, I mean, historically, Todd Bowles has been with Bruce Arians for a very long time, uh, and I mean. Bowles is not, you know, the offensive coordinator, but he's the head coach of the team. So does he try to shape the the identity of the team? Does he change it slightly? Because 719 passing attempts from Tom Brady, that's outrageous. That number is so ridiculously high that if, I mean, if you come down 80 passing attempts, which is, I don't think that's that's a huge number. If you come down to 80 and be more in line with kind of the rest of the league, then then Brady's overall numbers are absolutely going to come down. So that that's my biggest fear for Tom Brady. What's, what's great about Brady is Brady's not going to be the quarterback one, and everybody knows it because he, he doesn't have the, the rushing upside. Like there's he, No chance he's the quarterback one this season, not at this age. So he will be drafted as the quarterback 10, like he has been for – the last several years, and he will beat the quarterback 10. So he is as safe as it comes. If you sure. want to take the late-round quarterback approach and just grab Tom Brady as the 10th, 11th quarterback drafted off the board because people want the upside and they'll draft Trey Lance ahead of him because uh, massive upside and hope. And and But that's a risky pick. If you want the safe late-round quarterback, it's Brady. Sure. Russell Wilson at number eight. Russell Wilson. Incredibly, almost uh, 34 years old now. I think we all understand that, you know, he is a very high upside opportunity in the late seventh round at quarterback. Um, being a quarterback one for fantasy purposes, that's kind of his reputation. He has been that for a long time. Offensive line should be better than what he had in Seattle. Yes. More pass-friendly scheme. I don't like that he lost Tim Patrick, but there are other weapons there that are going to help. Corlin Sutton, Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler, the the running backs, Albert Guevanom, Greg Dulcich. Um, now, statistically speaking, per Matt DeSorbo, since 1999, traded quarterbacks scored 27% lower than the previous year. I would love to see that drilled down to Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. So I, I'm not too worried about that. I think he's going to have more freedom in this offense. You have Nathaniel Hackett at quarterback. The picture is – this is kind of, in my opinion, you, his ADP is you're drafting him at his floor, mm -hmm. and you could have a really high ceiling. I mean, this year for the quarterback position, when you just think strategically, it's so easy for me. There are five quarterbacks that I love where they're being drafted at, Kyler, Lamar, Hurts, Trey Lance, and Russell Wilson. You're getting a guy at the 7-8 turn – the wide receivers and running backs you're giving up there are, you know, shots in the dark compared to what you know Russell can be, which is, I don't know, a quarterback won every single year of his entire career other than the injured season he just came from. You've got the weapons. You've got the freedom. They're going to let Russ cook. You've got the division and the matchups for the shootouts we just talked about. You want to get in you know, this division and you don't want the price of a of a Herbert of a Patrick Mahomes, well get Russ. I mean Russell Wilson's gonna be in shootouts. Uh, he's got the weapons. I, I you know, he might be the best value in all of fantasy football. Uh, as much as I will very likely end up having one of those Kyler Lamar Hurt Hurts quarterbacks that I I've been aiming for in most of my leagues. And so I might pass on Russ or might you know already not need him. He could be the home run pick in 2022. Yeah, and looking at you know Nathaniel Hackett coming down here from uh, coming to Denver from Green Bay, eh, maybe it was just Aaron Rodgers, but I mean, this is the coach who was working with Aaron Rodgers the last couple of years, and you're those those passes inside the ten where you think you know 
the, the high T team is going to just try and and run it in. But inside the ten, you know, Aaron Rodgers continually was one of the the, the quarterbacks who throws a ton in there last year, over fifty attempts inside the ten. So like those. That, that's a huge increase for your opportunity for touchdowns when you can throw when you're that close to the goal line. So you have, we're all in agreement here that that Russ is an incredible value pick who could shock it, it, I say not shock. It, he would not shock us if Russell Wilson finishes in in the top three. And do you like getting off to a hot start? Do I you do. like opening your season oh, yeah. with a, uh, I like, a win? I like it hot. I think <laughs> Russell will as well going to Seattle for his oh, first yeah. game, <laughs> throwing five touchdowns. <laughs> In front of his former hometown crowd. Man, they're going to freak out if they pick him off. Oh, yeah, they will. All right, you ready for the hate? Let's go. Mike says he likes it hot. So let's step into the kitchen. Joe Burrow comes in at number nine. He's the quarterback six by ADP, fifth-round draft pick. We have him at eight, 10, 11. Uh, That's right. Mike, the floor is yours. Uh, I have uh, or lava. I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, look, if if you can't stand the heat, you get out of the kitchen, and that's why Andy, you brought us in the kitchen because we can. That heat. Yeah, is, we live in Arizona. Yeah, you, th- you think I'm not battle tested, yeah. ready for that heat? Uh, he was my ice pick on the Ice and Fire show just a couple weeks ago, and I laid it out of his numbers last year were like historic. He led the NFL in completion percentage. He led the league in yards per pass attempts. Like he was outrageously good. And for fantasy purposes, up until week 16, he had never given you that true boom game of, of passing the 30 points. He, he hit a, a quarterback two mark in week seven. But other than that, he was finishing as quarterback eight or worse on a weekly basis. And you, you need Joe, you need Joe Burrow to either repeat his historic uh, numbers from this past year or the volume has to get extremely pumped up, which that's not out of the range of outcomes. I'm not saying it is impossible that at the beginning of the season, you just completely explained it away by he was recovering from the knee injury, the pace of play and everything like that. They were just totally trying to protect him. But I don't think that the volume will get to the point where he will pay off the running back six. Perhaps my projection of where he is at, at quarterback 11, because I like other guys more than him, that's 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 fine. You can argue that that is too low. But I think that his ADP will not pay off for people, and I think that he will be disappointing at the end of the year. He'll still be fine, but he will be disappointing if you take him as the quarterback six. Yeah, one of the things I loved about Burrow coming into the NFL you know, when he was drafted was his mobility, his rushing ability. And, and you saw it in the beginning of his rookie year. He had that catastrophic knee injury, and then you wondered, <clears throat> is it going to come back? And it really didn't. You know, He no, played 16 games back. last year. He ran for 118 yards. So this is a guy playing for a good team. Obviously, they were in the Super Bowl. They've got a great defense with a coach that wants to run the ball Keep these leads. Use Joe Mixon, and you know if if, if they've got it, and he's not going to be adding the rushing baseline. So they're not throwing the ball like Tampa Bay and Brady. He's not going to throw for five thousand yards and forty touchdowns. It, he has the talent. He has the ability. Five hundred and twenty passing attempts last year. He did skip a week, but only five hundred twenty. What did Brady throw? Over seven. Over seven hundred. Yeah. So you you see the gap. Like now, maybe they come out. And they say, hey, look, Burrow is the future, not just of our franchise, but of the NFL. And we're going to give him another 100 passing attempts. We've got such great receiving weapons. And they should do that. Yes. And if they do that, it will pay off. They will not do that because Zach Taylor's their head coach. And so... They uh, may- I, as, as somebody that ranked him low, I still think Herbert is the outcome that is possible for Joe Burrow. Sure. That's what I'm saying. Yes, if he gets another 100 passing attempts... I, I completely agree. I'm saying I don't believe that he's going to get another 100, 150 passing attempts to do that. He has the talent and the ability to do it. I just Herbert don't. was at 672 last year, right. 150 more attempts. He'll so, get more. He, sh- yeah, he, he will definitely get, get more. Yes. He should get more. But he, the And his weapons are, are uh, yes. elite. Yeah, we're, we don't even need to comment on Higgins and Jamar Chase it's it's just, just a, a, Joe called me so I had to step up for him it's and, it's it's a matter of volume it is not a matter of is Joe Burrow good does he have great weapons like we're we're playing fantasy football and you have to use the market 
to your advantage. And th that's how you build your team. So, like, my, the the hard part I have for saying this is what they should be doing is we we say that a lot about teams. Like, it's clear and obvious to everyone watching the football game that here is how the game should be going. Here's the players that should be on the field. And that we fall into the, the, the fallacy of rational coaching, thinking that the coach will do what we think is the optimal thing. So I've, I have my concerns that the volume will go to a Justin Herbert level. If it does, if I'm wrong about that, then Joe Burrow will crush. Did you see Frank Reich's comment uh, about – Yes, I did. I loved it. It was just so honest. Why don't you and, share it with us? Uh, it, no, you, we, go look it up. Yeah, I mean, go look it up. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting here going, like, uh, what comment? Uh, Frank Reich uh, basically was talking about you know how good they were at running the ball, the ground and pound. He's like – that. He, he doesn't want to be a ground and pound team. You don't win championships in today's NFL yeah. basically that way. You know, you, you win championships through the air, and so it, he's which we, right. Which we saw them do to get to the Super Bowl, and we saw them do it to end the year when he was number one that and number one. That is absolutely true. And, yeah. and if, and so if they it's, do release the reins, then this will look really stupid. Yeah, and I think it's, it's probably going to be somewhere in the middle, so a finish – a little bit behind maybe where he's being drafted and a little bit ahead of where we have him. It's probably the most likely outcome. But that's not necessarily what you're shooting for exactly. for fantasy, right? Uh, speaking of, see, I said, you know, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Now the heat is coming to you from within the kitchen because we're all in the kitchen together, but I'm going to be bringing the heat because okay. they, thank goodness this is caveated by four point per touchdown. But Trey Lance ends up at 10. Yes. I, I've got him at 14, Jason at nine, Mike at seven. He's 13 in the rankings when it comes to six point per touchdown, which allows me to exhale a little bit. Uh, the story about Trey Lance is a story of what we know about fantasy football, which is that if you provide 500-plus rushing yards on the ground, you're going to autopilot your way into fantasy football importance and relevance because – Jalen Hurts threw 16 total touchdowns, a third as many as Tom Brady, and yet competed with him in fantasy because he brought such a high baseline. That is what you were hoping to get from Trey Lance. Yeah, and in the two games that we got to see him as a starter, the rushing was absurd. 16 carries in one game. Uh, I would never uh, – that might be the most he ever has in his career, but he's Could done be. it once. He already, he already showed that. Eight carries in the next game – they are going to design a team and a system here with Shanahan that utilizes the rushing and the mobility. He is elite in that. Um, the passing doesn't have to come for him to be good. The passing has to come for him to be great. But with the weapons of Debo and Kittle and Ayuk and Shanahan's scheme, and we've seen a couple completed big, long passes. We saw one in the preseason already. If the passing comes to fruition, because we already know the running's going to be there. That's a guarantee. If the passing comes, then he'll be a phenomenal pick, and if it doesn't, then he could fall flat on his face. Yeah, I think that you may see, like if I had to predict the storyline for Trey Lance's season, I think you're going to see big plays, and then you're going to see some up and down for the majority of the game. So you're going to have up and down performances, but enough for fantasy where you're running a lot, and then you're probably connecting on a big play or two. You have the weapons to do it. You have Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, um, you have George Kittle. What did I call him the other day? Greg Gregory? <laughs> Something Greg like Kittle. that, yeah. Um, that's going to be in my head for a while. Uh, and so you have big play capabilities on that offense, and he's got the arm to provide that. Um, but you may have to suffer through some you know, multi-interception, multi some fumbles. Sure. Some of the, I mean, look, you remember Lamar. I mean, Lamar's fumble story was a very – when you hold on to the ball a long time and you're trying to make stuff happen, there's going to be a learning curve for Trey Lance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think this ranking uh, – look, I would take Aaron Rodgers every day of the week over Trey Lance because, you know, Rodgers was the quarterback six last year. He always finds a way to throw a bunch of touchdowns. You talked about Patrick Mahomes being the best quarterback in football and everybody knows it. Rodgers is in that same category of, like, you know who he is. But um, if you if you want to take a chance, Lance is the guy. Quarterbacks who average eight or more rushing attempts per game over the last decade, their average finish was the QB six. Kyle Shanahan is. I'll be curious if that's what a, happens though. If he hits the eight rushing attempts per game, a little. I'm a little curious about what that settles in at because you have a risk that you didn't have last year. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo will not be on this roster. Correct. 
And San Francisco has dealt with injuries to the their starter and the disruption that that causes. We've seen C.J. Beathard and who's the other, who's the other quarterback I'm thinking what, of? Uh, Mullins? Yeah, Nick Mullins. So I'm just curious how vulnerable they will leave Trey Lance in design. Will it be six? Will it be eight? Will it be ten? Will sure. it be poc you know, I, I, I know when plays break down, he may just take off. That's that's the thing. But is, I'm curious how many design plays they'll do, like as an actual no speculation what they do, just curious what happens. Yeah, if they if they design four or five a game, you know, one a quarter, um he'll hit that eight mark because of his scrambling. And it's Shanahan puts his quarterbacks in a position to succeed. Even going through those hilarious names of C.J. Beathard and Nick Mullins, you know their next-gen stats of their expe expected completion percentage, they were top 10 when they would go out there because Shanahan just designs a, a very good, sharp, and smart system. I mean, that's that's why Kyle Shanahan you know, made the Super Bowl with Jimmy Garoppolo, was one dropped interception basically away from making it I hate how he year. always pieces it together he, as a Cardinal he's, fan. He's a good offensive coach yeah he is it sucks <laughs> and now he has a truly dynamic quarterback who it, it uh, and then on top of everything is willing to throw the ball down the field and you saw the third round pick Danny Gray who is extremely fast he will he's not going to be I like him a huge factor in the in the yeah. offense this year more than likely but it's like having uh it's like having KJ Hamler on your team for yep. Denver not the primary guy but once or twice a game, they'll probably put him out there, and he'll just run, a, he'll run a nine, and, and it's going to hit. Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, Russell Wilson, Joe Burrow, Trey Lance, four point per passing touchdown, top ten. Anything to add, gentlemen? The only thing I would add is that uh, this last year, the average draft price of the top 12 quarterbacks basically well they, all the people that were in the top 12 finished in the top 12 I think industry yep. wide we are um because of the rushing uh yep. you know coming for so many of these quarterbacks it makes it a little bit easier to predict so these are probably going to be uh, you know the right guys in some order so don't wait too long to draft them this year Ultimate Draft Kit for life giveaway. Go to ultimatedraftkit.com, pick it up, and you could win this Friday. Check it out. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.